You wouldn't want to work for them in a million years, but you'd watch them on TV any day. I've taken over all 78 channels, and you won't see any of your favorite shows again until you give in. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV bosses. How do I erase files like this one here, marked pensions? Um, just like this. All gone. Wonderful. For this list, we're taking a look at television's funniest and most relatable employers that bring something unique to the familiar sitcom archetype. Keep in mind that we're restricting this list to traditional bosses only. So we're excluding people like Louis De Palma from Taxi and Sam Malone from Cheers. I need a waitress. You need a job. You like the people here. You think that they like you. <laughs> and the phrase, magnificent pagan beast has never left your mind. <laughs> Number 10, Jimmy James, News Radio. I considered, uh, what, 30, 35 people for this job. Most of them had more experience than you, but you want to know what made you so special to me? Oh, what's that, sir? <laughs> what? As owner of Jimmy James Incorporated, Mr. James should command any room he walks into. Instead, the billionaire spends all his free time at the crown jewel of his empire, WNYX. To make a, make a long story short, I'm rich. <laughs> Whether running for president, replacing drive time with old-timey radio shows. Okay, what the hell is this? Phone bones folly, as you requested. Adding a romance arc to the news. I am on bended knee, asking for your heavy hand in marriage. <laughs> Live on the air, where our love first grew during the all-important drive time period. Or just enjoying a cracker or two, Mr. James can't help but inject life, oddball wisdom, and genuine heart into his chosen playground. I tell you what, I'm out of here. This has been the worst cracker time in recorded history. As much a father figure to his staff as he is a leader, it's hard not to love the quirky Jimmy James. The man so nice, they named him twice. I'm so lonely, <laughs> oh. Number nine, BP Richfield. Dinosaurs. Excuse me, Mr. Richfield? Ow! Oh, God. Why aren't you out there knocking down trees? It may have been set in 60 million and 3 BC, and it may have been populated with reptiles, but dinosaurs included all the staples found in most American sitcoms. The dysfunctional family, the best friends, and, of course, the intimidating boss. No bonus this year! Yes, there is. No, there isn't. Although BP Richfield is a Triceratops, and tree pusher Earl Sinclair is a meat-eating Megalosaurus, you often expect this suspender-wearing, hunched-over herbivore to devour his subordinate. You want to raise? Or what? Uh, or not. Wonderfully designed by the puppeteers at Jim Henson Productions, and aggressively voiced by Sherman Hemsley, Richfield will do anything to drive up sales at the We Say So Development Corporation, ultimately helping to cause his species extinction. I don't know what you're talking about! Number 8, Dr. Bob Kelso, Scrubs. Human Magic 8 Ball, tell me if I should play golf this weekend. At first glance, Bob Kelso might come off as a heartless, dishonest, manipulative bureaucrat who only cares about saving his hospital money. This year, Dr. Kelso had gotten a little lazy. There was the way he handled requests. Thanks. I'll look into it. While he's far from the perfect physician or person, there's more to the Sacred Heart Chief of Medicine than you initially think. Let's just say that around here I'm not as loved as your sergeant. Behind his constant insults and acts of adultery, Kelso secretly harbors affection for his co-workers, family, and patients. He'll just mask such compassion at any cost. If you want to get people's attention, you got to get more aggressive or more attractive. Pick one. After retiring, however, Kelso slowly lets his defenses down and reveals himself as a human being to his peers. Thanks for everything, Ted. Sincerely. Number seven, Lou Grant, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. You know what? You got spunk. <laughs> well, I hate spunk. <laughs> News director at WJM TV and begrudging mentor to Mary Richards, Mr. Grant is a no nonsense kind of boss. If I don't like you, I'll fire you. Right, right. You don't like me? I'll fire you. <laughs> Rough around the edges and a workaholic through and through, Lou 
doesn't trust many people. You're not allowed to ask that when someone's applying for a job. It's, it's against the law. Want to call a cop? But he and Mary have a different kind of working relationship. At times, it's more like a father-daughter bond than a boss-employee one. I think of you, well, I think of you like a daughter, which is saying a lot, because I have three daughters and one of them I don't even think of as a daughter. <laughs> He treats all of his workers with respect, well, with the possible exception of the moronic Ted Baxter, and is passionate about the news. Whenever I'm with a really first-class newsman, I get furious thinking about you. <laughs> but it's that underlying vulnerability that makes him so fascinating. It's that complexity that helped Lou Grant become the only TV character to have a lead role in both a successful comedy and a drama series. But I've uh, never seen you looking so uh, refreshed. Well, that's because I am refreshed. I got completely polluted last night. Oh. Number six, Captain Ray Holt, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Everyone, I'm your new commanding officer, Captain Ray Holt. When you have a work environment as zany as the 99th Precinct, you need a zero-nonsense police captain to balance things out. That's fine work, Detective. Played to perfection by a stone-faced Andre Brower, you can never tell when Captain Holt is happy, angry, or attempting to tell a joke. Oh, what judge were you talking to? That was my mother. You call your mom your honor? She's a federal judge in the Ninth Circuit. What else would I call her? Yeah, okay. As a result, almost everything that comes out of his mouth ends up being unintentionally hysterical. You know what the toughest part about being a gay black police officer is? The discrimination. <laughs> While he might not emote much, Holt has overcome many hurdles in life as a gay African American to become his department's respected boss and father figure. Good. Thanks, Dad. Number five, Ron Swanson. Parks and Recreation. I honestly believe that she was programmed by someone from the future to come back and destroy all happiness. In most sitcoms, it's usually the proactive boss who torments his lazy workers. In Parks and Recreation, it's the other way round. I'm a simple man. I like pretty dark-haired women and breakfast food. Ron Swanson loathes his job as Parks Department Director as well as the government he works for. My idea of a perfect government is one guy who sits in a small room at a desk, and the only thing he's allowed to decide is who to nuke. The polar opposite of city manager Chris Traeger, Ron will do everything in his power to avoid accomplishing any work. Give me all the bacon and eggs you have. Do you understand? Instead, dedicating his time to eating breakfast, woodworking, and silently sitting alone in his office. Regardless, he's constantly forced by his go-getting underling, Leslie Nope, to help make the world a better place. Look me in the eye. I'm so screwed now. Number four, Jay Peterman, Seinfeld. What do you know all that? That's my coat. You mean? Yes. I'm Jay Peterman. Although Jerry's a stand-up comedian and Kramer self-employed, although we use that term loosely, Seinfeld still managed to produce some exceptional workplace humor through George and Elaine's various bosses. Oh, for the love of God, man! <laughs> Just tell me what the product is. As uproarious as Mr. Steinbrenner is, He's got the girls on Costanza! I got to I'm telling you, Costanza! Jay Peterman leaves an even greater impression. Yes, yes. Go on, go on. He's not the easiest person to work for, given his oblivious and unpredictable nature. Peterman is so positively lively, though, that you can't help but be charmed by him. I set off down the train tunnel. But that's where the story takes a most unappealing turn. With a one-of-a-kind voice and infectious personality, John O'Hurley actually created a Jay Peterman even more iconic than the real Jay Peterman. That's it. Drop everything. We're going right now. <laughs> Number three, Jack Donaghy. 30 Rock. I'm Jack Donaghy, new VP of Development for NBC GE Universal Kmart. He might be the most die-hard liberal in real life, but Alec Baldwin was born to play the ultra-conservative businessman and Ronald Reagan devotee, Jack Donaghy. Making it through a full 24 hours without a single misstep is called Reagan. -y. Beginning as GE Vice President of East Coast Television and Microwave Oven Programming. That sounds like you program microwave ovens. Jack uses all his power to influence elections, crush his enemies, and work his way even higher up the ladder. That's absurd. Completely unnecessary. I haven't given it a second thought. 
Although Jack views everybody as a giant dollar sign, he always has time to impart wisdom to his mentee, Liz Lemon. I, I went to her apartment. I don't think she has a toilet. I saw my future, Jack. Never go with a hippie to a second location. In exchange, Liz acts as a loyal confidant who somehow manages to bring out Jack's tender side. Huh. <laughs> See ya. Number two, C. Montgomery Burns, The Simpsons. Excellent. The richest man in Springfield, USA, Mr. Burns runs his nuclear power plant like a Bond villain, minus the cat stroking. Relax, Simpson. I just brought you in here for a friendly hello. <sighs> and goodbye. You're fired. While his 104-year-old body is on the brink of becoming a corpse, the cogs in his diabolical brain never stop rotating. I am going to avenge my grandfather. We'll take on that greedy union and we'll get back our dental plan. With his dedicated assistant, Waylon Smithers, by his side, Burns is frequently cooking up new schemes to benefit himself, like blocking out the sun, depriving his workers of their dental plan, and stealing teddy bears from small children. I'm sure we can come to some sort of agreement. Yes! <laughs> All of Springfield fears Mr. Burns and would never take a stand against him, unless they happen to be a baby armed with a gun. He said, drop it! <laughs> Before we get to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. You'll get your promotion, Smith, just as soon as you do one last thing for me. Oh, come on. I've picked up your laundry, I've polished your shoes, I've done everything but bend over backwards for you, and my daughter did that, so I say we count it. Let him go. And you'll just have to put that on my, whatever, crime tab. No, 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 no. Taking a federal agent hostage is a separate charge. You know what you do? <laughs> Send her to a spa. All is forgiven in the hundred degree mud. <laughs> or if that doesn't work, you name a street after her. Or a park. They love parks. I give you money, you give me ideas. And you never say thank you. That's what the money is for. You're young. You will get your recognition. Number one, David Brent and Michael Scott, The Office. Oh no, <laughs> embarrassing. It seemed appropriate that we group these two office bosses together since they're so similar yet so different. I had a fish stick sandwich. Actually, I had two fish stick sandwiches. My girlfriend didn't want hers because I guess I'm the only aphrodisiac she needs. David is arguably even more conceited and insensitive, whereas Michael is more obnoxious and idiotic, though both are oblivious. The only time you should care about a woman's age is if she is too young for you, and I am not robbing the cradle. If anything, I am robbing the grave. When you're not laughing at them, there's a good chance you want to slap them across the face. You will never work in a place like this again. This is brilliant. Fact. Yeah? And you'll never have another boss like me, someone who's basically a chilled out entertainer. Neither knows when to shut up, which only makes them harder to like. Pam, she's going to punch the crap out of your face after work. I'm pretty sure we said slap. Nevertheless, you can't help but sympathize with two guys who are so socially inept that they must force relationships on their employees to achieve some form of friendship and family. If you're asking me what vibe I'm going to lay down, it's going to be a, a very much a, just a, a chill out, let's get to know each other type of vibe. Actually, that's pretty harsh. David and Michael are harmless and pretty lovable in their own special ways. Sorry, oh. mate. Oh, sorry, mate. Excuse oh. me. <laughs> what, are you doing? what are you doing? English? Dude. Do you agree with our list? Who's your favorite TV boss? Right, you want me to say it again? I'll say it again. I haven't had a pimple since I was 18, and I don't care if you believe me or not. And how's this? You're fired. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. I don't think I can. We would just end up naked. <laughs>